Angels 14. Hey Gremlin, uh, this video here is for you. It's just a quick throw together video, so I don't expect something very special, please. Um, but um, actually, let me lower the volume here just a little bit more. Um, how to get to a stable altitude here. So right now we're at 15,200 feet approximately. And uh, what we're gonna do is we will descend to uh, 2,000 feet, which is the stack altitude. Okay, so we reduce our throttle, bring out the speed brake, and then that's uh, descent. Uh, as you can see, it's a fairly steep descent. And now the first thing you want to keep in mind, of course, is when you do descents, uh, unless you want to fly, uh, you know, several feet per nautical mile descents or whatever approaches are required, um, in DCS we often do steep descents like that. We're not restricted by any of these regulations, so we can just uh, nearly really put the nose down and so on and so forth. Um, the very important thing to consider here is, of course, the closer we approach our target altitude, the more we want to reduce our descent rate, or we simply risk overshooting it. So let's do that early on and just start reducing here the descent rate. The closer we get to um, the 2000 feet that we're aiming at. Now, the most important thing to consider when doing precision flying is that A, there is no sweet spot for the stick or the throttle. Every input you do will require a counter input. So if uh, you push the stick forward, you will have to pull it back again. And if you pull it back, you will have to push it forward again. And the more you fly ahead of yourself and know what's coming, so you know that the input requires a counter input which again will most likely require a counter input and so on and so forth the easier you will be to control um, the aircraft in a nice and stable manner autopilot is off here and as you can see uh, here's the carrier group and we want to be at 2000 feet above it so we keep descending here we're still about 3,000 feet, so we keep reducing our descent rate now that we're approaching 2,000 feet because we do not want to overshoot them, right? And uh, the smoother we come in, the easier it is to catch. If we come approaching the 2,000 feet with minus uh, 4,000, minus 2,000 FPM, then yeah, of course, you know, we will have a harder time to catch the 2,000 feet when we come in with uh, minus 1200, minus 500 or any of that sort. So we're getting closer and closer and the more and more we're reducing the descent rate before really intercepting our desired altitude. We're pretty slow here and of course the slower we are the easier it is to manage altitudes and to control for that because uh, higher speed will displace you much faster naturally so uh, we really don't want to be fast when we're cruising in precision flight at a certain altitude and so on and so forth and you can see now we're pretty close to those 2000 feet but not quite there yet so we will keep correcting until we come uh, close to what we desire uh, really good flying I would say in the beginning you should aim for being between plus minus 100 feet, which is already great. And then once you feel more comfortable with that, you can start reducing that and trying to be within plus minus, uh, I would say 50 feet. And then if you want to torture yourself even further, then you can go to something aiming at about uh, plus minus uh, 10, 20 feet, or however close you want to be. Naturally, speed changes will require more stick input. So when you move your throttle, when you add speed or reduce speed, the aircraft will react to that by either lifting or uh, pitching the nose down. And you will have to counter that with your stick input and trim. However, 
in a especially non-fly-by-wire aircraft like the Tomcat, we fly with a stick, not with a trim. The trim is used to reduce your stick force, to reduce the force that you need in order to handle the aircraft. You should not fly by a trim. It's really there to just help you with your stick input and uh, not to replace it. A lot of people try to kind of, you know, trim out the aircraft to some kind of sweet spot, but the Tomcat specifically and the flying level at a certain speed will always have a, a little bit of a pitch up tendency, especially at higher speeds, at true speeds, it's above 250 to 350 knots or more even. And uh, as of course also important is that we keep correcting our mistakes. So if we see that we're undershooting it a little bit, we need to pull back on the stick. And if we see that we are overshooting it a bit, climbing above the desired altitude, we need to release on the stick a little bit. And as you can see, I'm constantly kind of correcting here. You know, I'm constantly either pulling on the stick or pushing on the stick a little bit, changing my uh, trim inputs. Actually, I can <coughs> engage the controls overlay, so you can see that better here as well. Um, and what a lot of people do is that they get complacent, okay? They uh, think they're kind of now at that altitude and uh, so they don't need to work further for that. But then they get either a runaway climb or a runaway descent, and uh, then they spot it too late, overreact, and uh, of course, you know, if I push on the stick harsh like this, and then pull back harsh like this, uh, what you can easily end up with is called pilot-induced oscillation. But if you're very smooth on the stick, and uh, if you train yourself to have those minimal inputs and keep correcting those inputs, you can see that I can fly the Tomcat really stably here at uh, 2,000 feet, no problem, right? But you have to work for that. It's what we call fighting for position. This is especially true when you fly formations, or when you fly uh, behind the tanker, taking on fuel. There simply is no such thing as a sweet spot for your stick or your throttle. You have to constantly adjust. And for example, now I'm very much concentrated on the altitude. Look what happened with the speed. We should be at 250 knots. I neglected that. So we're at 300 knots suddenly, and I need to reduce the throttle, get back to those 250 uh, knots. Please note, I'm not flying a proper marshal here. I'm not concentrating on any of that. That's really to demonstrate to you um, that it is fairly easy to fly level at a set altitude if you keep in mind that you know when you're descending you need to push pull back on the stick my apologies and if you're climbing then well you need to release on the stick and uh, add a little bit of a descent track what i'm using here is neither the vvi in the hut nor the vvi itself i'm using the altimeter because the vvi either overreacts or is lagging the most precise instrument for us to use when it comes to these things is the altimeter and I'm using both VVIs simply as a cross-reference, okay? Um, it, of course, indicates me whether I'm descending or climbing fast, how much I'm descending and how much I'm climbing uh, per minute in feet. But uh, the one instrument that I'm really interested in is the altimeter. As you can see, now we dropped a little bit below that. That's because we're adjusting speeds and so on and so forth. Um, Simply correct your mistake, don't panic, don't give up because you undershot your altitude or overshot your altitude, correct for it. So if we're a little bit below, uh, we need to climb a little bit again. And if we're a little bit above, well then we need to descend a little bit again. The important thing is that we do not start getting complacent with that and that we keep in mind that at any given moment in flight, we have to keep fighting for that position. It's not easy, it is demanding, it is exhausting. Uh, this is why, of course, also we have something like the autopilot and altitude hold that when we are task saturated with other stuff, like setting up the cockpit for an engagement or some things, we can actually take our mind off of that and concentrate on the other tasks rather than flying the Tomcat. And uh, additionally, of course, this is why it is great to have a Rio because the Rio takes away from the pilot so many tasks that he can really concentrate on flying the aircraft and flying the aircraft beautifully and nicely. Um, 
whereas uh, you know the more modern jets with fly by wire they will help you a lot with that they will have auto trim and so on and so forth um, maybe use more autopilot modes whatever but uh, in general of course it is a benefit in the tomcat that we do have a rear that takes away these tasks from us so that we can fully concentrate on the most important thing for the pilot which is flying the aircraft and all the time now you can see this is all hand flown okay uh, autopilot is off as you can see we can stay very very close to those 2000 feet and now again we're a little bit above so yeah, let's push the nose just a little bit down and get back to those 2000 feet and then correct with it again and smoothly and again the speed is running away i'm not concentrating on that i'm not concentrating on uh, you know flying a proper pattern flying a proper marshal i'm really concentrating now on demonstrating to you the effects of input counter input and counter counter input of the set counter input and so on and so forth but yeah be ahead of yourself know what's coming try to make your stick input smooth try to know what you're doing with the aircraft and know that you have to counter it so that you're prepared of what's coming already in advance and that makes it much much easier uh, to maintain altitude but you can see it's really really uh, stable and nice and smooth and easy to maintain a certain altitude when we keep uh, these kind of um, procedures in mind and if we stay ahead of ourselves ahead of the aircraft and uh, if we know already in advance what we want where we want it and prepare ourselves accordingly like i mentioned in the beginning for example reducing the descent rate before hitting a desired altitude and so on and so forth so those are just a couple of tips and now uh, let's add a little bit of autopilot here let's get it just right before we do that okay we want to climb back to those 2000 feet again so here we are and again i'm using the altimeter the vvi in the hut and the vvi instrument itself is just a cross reference now I'm turning on autopilot attitude hold and I add altitude hold and then I can take off the hands of stick and throttle and you know for example prepare the aircraft for landing um, do whatever tasks are demanded from me and the autopilot is going to keep that um, nice and smooth as well, we'll keep the bank level, we'll keep the um, altitude that I want to be at I can change my speed and so on but even with speed changes you will see that the altitude hold will have to catch up in a certain way as well so there might be some oscillation there might be some deviation you might have to correct it again but for the autopilot the same applies as for hand flying you want to know ahead of what you're doing when you want to do it you want to prepare accordingly and you want to be a smooth and stable as you can before you engage the autopilot if you engage the autopilot at uh, minus 1000 feet fpm or plus 1000 feet fpm then yeah you're in for trouble because the autopilot will want to return to the set altitude that you captured on engagement and thus oscillate a lot in order to get there and uh, you know if it's deviating too much then those oscillations may just not stop they just gonna keep oscillating and uh, it will not feel really stable and nice for you so those are just a few tips to keep in mind and i hope they help i hope i was able to demonstrate to you that uh, flying um, here with uh, uh, hand by hand or with the autopilot at a set altitude in this case 2000 feet is very much possible it's just something that we need to prepare ourselves correctly and we must not become complacent and we must try to reduce our inputs and counter inputs as much as we can but at no point in time will we ever stop correcting what the aircraft is doing and what our inputs are doing again i hope that helps just a short video quickly thrown together without preparation to answer a couple of your questions gremlin and i hope it helps you and i wish you happy training and happy flying with the tomcat and have a great day bye